Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the third episode of my RPG Maker VS Ace video tutorials. In this episode, I will be going over how to map and the re and what the regions do. I went into I started to explain it on my last episode, but in this episode, I'm gonna go into more details with it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you have been enjoying my videos and you will also be updated every time i release a new video if you liked my series so far make sure to hit the like button and comment and if you don't like them hit the dislike button and comment telling me why you don't like them and without any further ado let's go ahead oh yeah thumbs thumbs up guy says hello let's start all right this is exactly where we left off last episode all right let me um delete this map all right once you start the game you're gonna have a map like the um, one that you saw in the last episode but if you want to make a new map all you do is basically you click on new map actually let me go you click on new map but you could also load a sample map which is a new feature in RPG Maker VS Ace, meaning you could just load a map which is made by the um Interbrain or whoever made RPG Maker VS Ace to show you guys an example of what mapping looks like and then you could use it as a reference to make your map or make a map as good or better than it depending on your skills at skills of mapping so when you load that it just opens up a new map of that map that you've seen let's go ahead and delete we're going to be making our own maps so go ahead and make a new map let's name this um tutorial village and then where it says okay in general settings where it says name that's going to be the name that displays on the portfolio as i've been calling it which is the map viewer and then the display name is going to be the name that appears in the in-game map like once you enter a map that's a map this it displays the name of the map at the top right of the screen so that's going to be the name. So you can name this differently and then name this differently. It doesn't have to be the same name. And I will show you what the display name does once. I'm going to name it, I mean, Tutorial Village 1, just to show you the the variations of it. Tile set is important to your map and which is, okay. Display name is also a new feature in RPG Maker VS Ace. And Tau Set is also a new feature in RPG Maker VS Ace, but was actually in Included in RPG Maker VS, I mean RPG Maker XP, and before that, I think. So, since we're going to be making our town, let's go ahead and make it exterior. But I'm going to show you how to make your own tile sets and how to configure tile sets in a later episode. But for now, just keep in mind that I mean, just say that you're picking, we're using the four, the first one. The default one, the the first default one is just if you're making a field map, which is like the overworld of an RPG. The second one is if you're making like an exterior, like an outside map, like outside of a town, outside of a forest, outside of whatever, outside of a dungeon. Interior is making the inside, inside of buildings and stuff like that. And dungeon is making the inside of dungeons and making dungeons, basically. So for this, we're going to keep the key to the exterior. Let's not make it the map. The width and the height is again self explanatory, it's just the width of the map. Width and height of the map, which is going to be 20 by 20. Scroll loop. Okay, this does. This. Hmm, I don't know how to explain this to you. What this basically does is make your map go on forever. I don't know. I don't. I'm, I've never used this um, option or know how it works fully. So basically, you can make it loop vertically. That means it just keeps on going vertically, and you keep on going through the same place, and you keep on doing the same thing. You can make it go horizontally, which goes to the right or to the left infinitely, or you could do both. Um, for parallelized background 
is also used for m multiple reasons, but I'm going to be explaining to you guys what it's mainly what it's supposed to be used for. But with script, you could use it to make parallel maps. Okay, let's make an example map here. Let's say you just walk up here, and let's say this is the edge of the map. What Pal Parallax does is basically just add a graphics to make the game look more appealing. Wh which one should let's use? Let's make it this. No, let's make it this one. And then let's go ahead and make it loop. See, you I could see this the loop um horizontal and loop vertical basically just moves the parallax to the, and it just makes it scroll to the right or to the left and make it look like like let's say you have a sky it just makes it look like the sky is moving so i'm just gonna go ahead and explain that show you that let's make it horizontal scroll speed to one show and edit what show and editor means is basically if you leave that unchecked, it won't. It will just make show the white checker marks, the white and gray checker marks. And if you have that option checked, it's gonna show you the parallax in the editor without. It's not gonna be moving though. It's still gonna be static like that. Go ahead and test it. Remember, I'm recording and rendering a video at the same time, so that's why this is lagging a little bit so that's basically what the looping does oh i still have the map loop on so my bad so it's basically gonna look like that see it adds to your map making it look more appealing than it would if you didn't do that let me i'm gonna keep the parallax on okay what this does actually i'm i never used the default battle system so i actually don't I'm not 100% sure on what it does, but I'm pretty sure it is what it does. Specific background, basically just like, if you don't set a region and I think if you don't wait, just, yeah, if you don't set a region and then this is basically just like, this is the default um, battle background, the default battle background of the, of the map. If you didn't set a region to tell the game to show you a different battle background. It's always going to show you this one that's not um, specified by the region or, or something like that. Auto change background music. I also make no one moving to the map. So what this does is basically when you move to a new map, it, it changes the, um, it changes the background music. So you set the background music and then once you enter a new map, it just changes. If you leave that on chat, it's just going to carry over the previous map background music that you had although background sound also does the same thing but only for the background sound bgm background music bgs background sound disable dashing is like just basically to turn off when you hold shift you dash when you have this check you can't run in that map notes the specified or use for it is to just leave notes to yourself but with use of scripts you could add like stuff to the map to do some craziness but it's basically just to leave notes to yourself about the map and what you want to be doing with the map but with scripts you could do a lot more with the map encounters when not specified again this is the default enemies that you're specified by yeah this is basically gonna be the monsters you're gonna fight if it's not specified by regions that means if i just leave slime that means all over the map you're going to be fighting slimes but then if i specify um region by id range let's make that two region id one and region wait what region okay okay so when i'm in region one i'm going to be fighting jellyfish and when I'm in region 4, I'm going to be fighting jellyfish. And when I'm in region 2, I'm going to be fighting jellyfish. So in all those regions, I'm going to be fighting jellyfish included with the slimes too. Because it's in the whole map. And that's basically what that does. And this is um this is the random encounter. So every 30 steps I take, supposedly, a monster is going to... And that in average, every 30 steps I take, a monster is gonna um, appear. So you could set this higher. So like every 1,000 steps, a monster appears on an average, and then you could set it lower. 
but let's go ahead and leave that to zero and go ahead and take out these monsters because we're not into fighting yet save this and that's basically what how you make a new map okay that actually took longer than I thought it would but I'm gonna um, finish up this tutorial this might go on to like 15 minutes or something like that um <clears throat> let me actually show you how the map now you know how to set up the parallax and how to okay this is the canvas as I've been calling it that's what I call it personally but that's not what it's called if you want to know what it's called you could ask around or again like I've been recommending you go to the um, tutorial which shows you what everything is and in this they call it number five they call it map view okay what's number four map list oh okay so is that's the map view but I'm gonna call it the canvas to make it more visual for you guys the canvas you paint on it you paint with your palettes which are the maps so let's make a simple map let's make a village since this is a NPC village so it's, it's very very simple to map in this game to map in RPG Maker VS because all you it's basically like drawing a picture you're just drawing a picture I'm gonna make a quick map nothing special nothing fantastic it's a village actually let's make it let's make it regular RPG Maker VS shapes mm -hmm. Making a simple village, nothing, nothing outrageous, nothing too big, nothing too small. Um, since it's a village out in the woods, actually, no, let me not to put that. So, what I'm doing now is basically the process you're going to be going through every time you're making a map. So, I'm going to be skipping to this video like right now. And now you're looking at this map, you say, hmm, it seems a little bit plain. Well, this is where this comes in. So in every map tile set, you're going to have the options to make a A, B, C. What this does is basically layers. Everything that's on A is always going to be on the bottom. And everything on B to E is always going to be on top and they cannot stack. So what do I mean by that? Okay, see, everything I've done so far is using the layer A. So I haven't done anything with B and I haven't done anything with C. So let's say I wanted to add windows to my to my town. What would I do? I go to C, get a window, and I add it. And then what, what I mean by it doesn't stack, meaning I can't put another thing on B on top of that. It's just going to replace it. It's just going to replace it. So And I can't put anything from from c to e on top of that because it's just gonna also replace it it do it does not stack it only stacks with a so a stacks with b through e and b through e nothing there stacks except for with a so let's go ahead and continue so after adding tile set b to c on it it livens up the map as it was plain when i only had the a on it so that's basically the process of mapping but you could add more you could you could make this look a lot better than it does right now but this is just me going doing it fast i like going run doing a oh my gosh i can't tell this is me doing a fast map just to show you guys what the process of making a map is now um regions i'm just gonna explain it because i'm not gonna be adding it to here because this is in uh like a map that has monsters to it so oh, i actually don't have a way to leave this town so let's go ahead and add that right there all right there we go that's how you enter how do you leave from this side uh it doesn't really care doesn't matter um Oh, actually, let me go ahead and add this here, like this. Why is that there? Don't know. Just to liven up the map a little bit. Yeah. All right. Save that. Okay. So, regions. Go to regions. 
what regions basically do like i've said before is if i add every place that has a one on it a monster is gonna appear there a specified monster that you pick is gonna a specified group of monsters or months of one monster is gonna appear there and then once you enter region two different monsters are gonna appear there and it's also gonna have a different battle back if you choose to i don't know if you need a script for that or it comes default because i never use the default battle system so i don't really know so basically different monsters appear with different numbers and colors of regions so slimes appear in one goblins appear in two and slimes goblins and dragons appear in 27 and sea monsters appear in 46 basically that's what um that's what regions do and without any what else do I have to go over with mapping? That's basically all I have to do with mapping. So without any further ado, I would like to end this video, which is actually have gone on for 26 minutes, but I'm going to shorten it to like 10, 15, 10 to 15 minutes. So thanks again for watching my la, 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 my video tutorials on RPG Maker VS Ace. And the next episode will be inventing overview, basically showing you guys the overview of inventing and not actually inventing. So thank you guys again for watching. Make sure to like and comment on this video if you've liked it. Any kind of feedback is appreciated. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned and I will see you guys on the next episode.